In other words, if you want the most op optimized, the, 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 the best reading that you can get is literally is step one, is do the two-point calibration, mm -hmm. make sure that that calibration fluid is equalized to the same temperature as the sump. Mm -hmm. And step number two is use the IV or some kind of isolated vessel yep. to remove the uh, possibility of electrical interference. So we wanted to make the process as, as accurate as possible, and that's why we, we came with the IV. We said, let's isolate the, the probe, the conductivity probe from the sump. Mm -hmm. That way it removes that risk of any electrical noise interference. So we remove it, we put into what we call IV or isolation vessel. That's fantastic. So it's completely, so you don't have to worry about heaters. You don't have to worry mm -hmm. about pumps or stray voltage yeah. out there because it's very common. Yeah. Even though, you know, you may not feel it when right. you turn it, it's like, you're talking about millivolts. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're talking about millivolts, just a tiny fraction of mm -hmm. stray voltage can, can, can be the it. difference. Mm -hmm. Now, I also know that we are going to recommend that when somebody calibrates the conductivity probes, that they actually have to they have to do an equ they equalize. They have to put the the, the the conductivity calibration fluids in the tank mm -hmm. to bring the temperature out yeah. because the temperature will make a big difference. Well, this is something we really learned is, yes. especially in my application where I have this aquarium lab, um, this room may run at 83 degrees and I have a chiller running that keeps the water at 78. And basically when it would pull a sample out of the the aquarium and then make the measurement the water was starting to increase in temperature after a while room. the temperature yeah. the room temperature so it, and then it's looking at a live reading and you see in this fluctuation from what it sampled versus what the current time it was reading exactly. in that in that beaker and that's the reason why first of all we came up with that sample testing mm -hmm. so the sample testing does a snapshot yeah so what what happens is the water is pulled from the sump mm -hmm. into the IV and then at that point we have fresh water fresh salt water yeah. that is the same temperature as the sump at that point we take a snapshot of the pH mm -hmm. and we take a snapshot of the conductivity or salinity as everybody knows it and then that gives you an accurate reading. Yeah. Anything after that. Yeah, you can start drifting. You can start, see and, that, and that's okay because what, we ma what matters is the snapshot. Mm -hmm. And then you can test as often as you want. You can test every hour, you can test every two hours, three hours, yeah. however you want. But you want to do emphasize that it is the snapshot because that's the most, the freshest, the, the sample mm -hmm. reading was take when the water was the freshest. Yeah. And also, we noticed that again, like calibration, you have to calibrate when the, when the calibration fluids are the same temperature as the tank. Right. Because that will, you know, if, you, if the temperature is two degrees, yeah. it can drift salinity. Right. And that's what we said about calibration. And you have to make sure that the calibration liquids are the same temperature as the sump. So you have to float them in the sump for a yeah. little while to let them equalize. Because a couple of degrees difference in temperature could mean a, a degree or so difference in, yeah. in, in PPT when it comes to calibrating. Yeah, great point, Carlos, because if you, know, you, you get the probe, it'll come with the two-part uh, calibration fluid, and you may get that in, and it's been in the UPS truck, and it's you know, across the country, 100 degrees. Or 30 degrees, hurry, whichever. Yeah, whatever, and you're in a hurry and, and want to do the calibration, and it's, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. I mean, it will work, but you're just not going to have an accurate reading. It's going to be off. Yeah. So you got to grab that reading. Whenever you do, take it out, put yep. it in the tank for about 20 minutes or something, let it, let it equalize, and then do the calibration yep. at that point. And that'll make a big difference. All right. So another thing that I wanted to make sure is that everybody knew is that um, we are not limiting people to just, they have to use the IV, right? right? Correct. They can, can, can they use the probe in the sump? Yeah, absolutely. You know, but then, you know, we're, we're letting you know that if you see in these variations or these drifts of the salinity moving up and down, there's a good chance that's the interference you're seeing via pumps, heaters, other electrical devices in your sump. So, in other words, if you want the most op optimized, the, 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 the best reading that you can get is literally is step one is 
do the two-point calibration, mm -hmm. make sure that that calibration fluid is equalized to the same temperature as the sump. Mm -hmm. And step number two is use the IV or some kind of isolated vessel yep. to remove the uh, possibility of electrical interference. Correct. Okay. You know, that's a, that's a, you know, I wish that, um, We'd known this for years. Know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly.